There aren't very many groundbreaking phones out there these days. The smartphone has been iterated upon for over a decade and changes from year to year are often imperceptible to the average consumer. Smartphone sales have slowed primarily because people no longer see any compelling reason to buy a new phone for a tiny bit more screen space, a marginally better camera, or a slightly faster processor. When improvements to operating system speed are measured in milliseconds, it is hard to get the average person excited to spend $1,000 every year or two. And then you have something like the Galaxy Fold. I've had this device for about nine months now, long enough, in my opinion, to make a very well-informed review of a decidedly ambitious, yet truly first-generation product. Someone who's had the phone for only a few days, or even a month, and reviewed it is doing you a disservice. There's no way you can have something as innovative, and in some cases limited, like the Fold, and make a determination in that amount of time. So I've used it exclusively since the day it became available. I've taken it to college football games, concerts, to work every day, traveled to several cities with it, and played many, many hours of mobile games on it. And since this is a gaming channel, I'll dedicate a large portion of my review toward one of the biggest benefits the Fold provides, and that is indeed for gaming. First, however, I'll get some of the basics out of the way. The Galaxy Fold is $1,980 before tax. For that price, you get the phone, a case, and the Galaxy Buds, which are otherwise $130. The case would likely be about $30 if it was for sale, though it doesn't provide anything other than rudimentary protection. Personally, I don't use cases. The phone comes with 512 gigabytes of storage, so the equivalent iPhone coming in at around $1,500 with 512 gigabytes of storage really isn't that far off, especially when you factor in the Galaxy Buds that are included. Still, that is a lot of money. Let's cover the things that you are sacrificing on the Fold, and then we will get into what I like, what other concerns I have, and what I love about it. The first sacrifice comes in screen real estate when the device is closed. Though the display is quite a bit larger than the original iPhone up through the iPhone 4, by today's standards, it is small. Next, you're losing an IP rating, meaning you can't get the phone wet. Finally, the Fold is considerably heavier than your average smartphone. How big of an issue those are for you is certainly personal preference. I have for years exclusively placed my cell phone in my front left pocket, and the Fold is no different. I've never used my phone in the pool or any other body of water either. Being a relatively large man, weight is not an issue for me either. But for you, any one of those issues may be a deal breaker. Moving on, the inner screen, all 7.3 inches of it, is plastic. It can be easily scratched or damaged. For this reason, I am certain Samsung made the best design decision compared to Huawei's Mate X, which has the screen on the outside of the phone. I think there's a reason Huawei's Mate X never actually released outside of China, and that is because in real world use, the screen gets destroyed quickly. That phone even comes with its own glasses style case that they expect you to keep it in whenever it isn't being used. The beauty of the Fold is that I can use it as a typical phone when I need to, normally at work, during meetings when I need to glance at emails or text messages, and then unfold it and use the large screen when sharing a spreadsheet, photo, or a video with someone else. I've had strangers all over the country approach me about the phone, and all were amazed and excited about a future with foldable phones. For a device this expensive, it does have the predictable high-end components. It is very fast, or snappy, whatever word you want to use, but that is to be expected. Same with the camera lineup, of which there are six cameras and they take extremely good photos on par with the latest Galaxy Note and S-series phones. What really separates it from any other phone in the market is its inner 7.3 inch folding screen. Now, one of the best uses of this screen is for games. I am primarily a console and PC gamer, depending on the game, but I played more games for more hours on my Fold in 9 months than I have for the entirety of the rest of my life prior on every previous phone I've owned. The main reason is that the screen allows for even mobile controls to work because there's enough room for your thumbs to be held on the screen while not obscuring the vast majority of the game. And I want to be clear here, there is no substitute in my opinion for physical controls. So while I love mobile gaming on my Fold, I still prefer to play on my Nintendo Switch. Still, the Fold is always with me and is far more pocketable than my Switch, and it has better battery life. 
I can play the Elder Scrolls Blades for an hour and only use up about 10% of the battery life of the Fold. Even other battery intensive games like Call of Duty Mobile and Mario Kart Tour look great and don't kill the Fold's battery. Simply put, the gaming experience works amazingly on the Fold, far better than any other mobile gaming experience I've ever had. Even the front screen is fine to use for games. I'll routinely log into the Elder Scrolls Blades and open a chest, sell some items, and get my free daily item using it, and then later on, when I want to do some dungeon crawling, I'll open up the screen and use the much larger, nicer display. The hitching and stuttering issues I experienced with Blades on my Galaxy S8 Plus are gone, and Blades looks amazing. In fact, every game I've played looks great on the larger display, and they're all much easier to play. Call of Duty Mobile looks especially good and controls great as well. I activated gyro aiming and combined with normal FPS aiming the game has been quite fun to play. Mario Kart Tour in particular is way easier to control on the fold compared to my previous phone since you are forced to play it in portrait mode. If you are a big mobile gamer, I can't recommend the fold enough. To average daily use, there is one other thing about the fold that I surprisingly love. That is, its size when closed. It is narrower than a standard phone. Looking at it by itself, you'd think that it is abnormally long, but place it against a normal smartphone and you'll see it is very comparable in height. It is much thicker though, however even though it is thicker, it actually feels smaller in my pocket and in my hand when using it to make phone calls. It is far more comfortable to hold when closed than the average smartphone. Having used the phone for the better part of a year, I haven't had any hard crashes or times I had to force reset the device. All software has worked pretty much flawlessly and as you'd expect. Samsung did include other settings to tinker with, but default worked just fine for me. I also love the fingerprint reader placement on the side of the device, as that is where I naturally rest my thumb. It is too sensitive by default though, so I set it to only read when prompted by a login or some other security related reason. I also set up face unlock, so between the two I usually have the phone unlocked before settling in to even look at the screen. One other thing is that while I don't use cases, I know most people do. Being that this is a niche device, there aren't that many case options available if you don't like the one included in the box. Even 9 months into the device's life cycle, case options pale in comparison to any other mainstream device. Any bulky cases would really make this thing feel like a brick though, so keep that in mind if you are on the fence. At the end of the day though, you have to ask yourself if this innovation is worth $2,000. If you only make $24,000 annually, that answer is a resounding no. This is definitely a luxury device, and it makes things better. It is not essential. Playing games, reading ebooks, watching videos, looking at spreadsheets and emails, all things that it makes better. There isn't something new here you can't do with any other device. Well, actually, I take that back. No other device will fold in half. But how much better does that make your life? And is it worth $2,000 to you? That is only something that you can answer for yourself. If you can find one on display in the store, and have the disposable income, I'd highly suggest you check it out. See what you think. For a mobile gamer, I can't think of a better device out there. For someone who watches a lot of shows on their phone, or writes a lot of emails, looks at spreadsheets or presentations, it is a great device for them as well. If you just check Twitter and browse the web on your phone, it is hard to recommend this over another high-end device that is half the price. Still, innovation isn't cheap, and the cutting edge of technology often comes with compromises like we see with the Fold. For me, I am extremely happy with it, and I expected to use it for at least another year to a year and a half. I'll be sure to post follow-up videos if something happens with the phone that negatively affects my current view on it, but for now it really has made my work more productive, my mobile gaming more fun, and the videos I watch more immersive. I've not changed anything about my lifestyle to accommodate the phone, and being that there was a bit of hysteria about the so-called fragility of the phone, I think that is high praise. The durability of the fold was a big question mark, and rightfully so. However, here we are nearly a year in, and so far, so good. Also, and this has nothing to do with the functionality of the phone, but I absolutely love the feeling of opening and closing it. It is just so satisfying, even many months later, I still just do it for fun. Overall, if you have the money and the fold interests you, I'd say go for it. Get the insurance and enjoy being on the cutting edge of technology if you are the type of person that appreciates what will undoubtedly become a staple of mobile devices as we move into the future. There will surely be major improvements over the next few years, 
such as actual durable folding glass rather than plastic. But in the meantime, you can experience the future today. With an expected Fold 2 announcement in August, the original Fold may be discounted soon, so keep a lookout. Otherwise, I don't plan on upgrading to that newer model unless there is something extremely compelling. We will see what Samsung has in store for Generation 2 soon enough. Also, if there are any other games that you'd like me to download and try in the Fold, let me know in the comments. I may make a follow-up video to show some additional games if there is enough interest. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. Maybe click that bell icon. And as always, thank you so much for watching.